think we can go ahead and get started. So thank you for taking the time uh, to join us today. This is a live product demo and it happens every week at this time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Sandra Bauslar. I'm on the marketing team and I'm joined by my colleague, Ben Keen, who is an automation expert and sales engineer here at trade.io. I'd love to learn about you though. So I'm going to launch a very quick poll that you should see on your screen now. Um, so I'm going to leave the poll up um, and let people vote as I move forward with the presentation. So today we're going to go over an introduction to automation and the trade platform, which will be followed by an in-depth look at a specific use case. We're going to go over how to create an automated deal desk using Salesforce and Slack in the trade platform. So in today's demo, we're going to show how we can automate a deal desk process. Often sales teams and sales operations professionals struggle to keep up, especially if there are multiple deals, emails, and proposals to sort through. This manual process shows your sales team's response times, response time to deliver a proposal to your prospects. If it's a competitive situation, this can put your team in a bad position to win the deal. If sales operations cannot keep track of what has been approved, then your company is at risk of over discounting or passing along a proposal that is not aligned with your company's pricing policies, which could lead to a proposal being recalled or cause a problem when you need to renew this customer's contract. So what we're going to see is a workflow that runs when an opportunity reaches a certain stage will notify a specific Slack channel where the manager or approver can review the deal and approve or reject the deal. We'll then update Salesforce and move the deal to the next page. All right, that's enough of me talking about this. Let's see how we automate this process in the trade platform with our automation expert, Ben. Ben, over to you. So as I go through this, I know we got, I think about 27 um, or 27, including us, so 25 participants would love um, everyone to ask questions. And I, can, I know there's quite a few of you, but I can try to answer any specific um, targeted questions about maybe your tech stack as we go through and ideas come up. So as participant driven, I would, as this can be, I would like to make it. Um, so with that said, Looks like we already have someone, oh, it's Sander popping the chat. Um, I can jump in. So if you were to, to jump into Trey, right? Start from the home screen and create a new instance or jump into your instance, you start from our dashboard, right? So this is your, your home base, um, the place where all of your automations are built out, right? So for my, my team, our sales engineering team, you, there's different, different members, Sajil, Stuart, Thomas, um, we have a demo account and that's what I'm in right now. You can see different automations amongst support, finance, customer success. These are actually funny enough, um, all customer workflows. The, these flows we've actually hand plucked from different customer accounts with their approval um, to show off. It's kind of interesting. Some of the, the coolest and um, most, I would say, uh, progressive builders uh, in Trey are not necessarily the Trey team. It's actually our customer base. They design very um, proprietary and like, I would say more revolutionary automations that serve their business needs. So you can see, as I scroll through this, you see, this is an interesting one. Every time a competitor is mentioned in a sales call, it's an automation. Um, there's a lot of HR onboarding, pretty typical CRM synchronization. The list kind of goes on. Um, automations and integrations are obviously customized to whatever your business needs are, right? It's not, it's not an out of the box situation. It's more of a, a customized build to solve whatever you're being challenged with. So when thinking about Trey, I would think about what are my just top three or top five tech stack challenges, anything. It, it can be full blown solutions such as lead routing. Like maybe you're about to purchase lean data um, for $30,000. 
um, and you're trying to figure out how to route your leads correctly, that can be an automation in Trey. You could build a complete lead routing automation, like an out of the box tool that you'd maybe buy, you could create within Trey, um, theoretically for no extra cost if you already had a subscription. So with that says, so that was a good amount of background. Um, obviously, if we have time at the end, more than happy to rewind and dive into any of, the, any of these. I want to pinpoint and zoom in a little bit on what Sander was discussing, right? A specific automation that maybe um, you are challenged with or a lot of our customers are, as well as internally we use, is a deal desk automation, right? As Sander's describing, um, you want that process to flow as seamlessly as possible, but also keep in mind, the timing, you need it to be precise, right? You don't want to have any deal get approved that shouldn't have been approved. Maybe the, the feasibility is not there. Um, it's not the pricing integrity isn't there. You need all the requirements to flow, but also the whole deal desk process to be as quick and accurate as possible. So let's talk about what, what Trey is doing, right? So Trey, if we were in that dashboard, each of these tabs is considered a workflow. So I'm popping in here now into to a specific workflow, right? The, our deal desk automation happens to be two flows combined. It's a two part. Sometimes workflows are maybe five parts. Sometimes a lot of times they're just one. This one happens to be a 1.0 and a 2.0. If I would just start to describe what it's doing, I start from the top, right? There's a, a trigger point, right? This one's particular as you kind of guess is listening for an opportunity when it changes stage. And then based on that logic filters it out and only wants to, cause think about a deal desk. It, we only care about proposal opportunities, right? Ones that need to be approved. So any other stage, whether it's um, uh, SDR call, uh, legal, whatever your other opportunity stages to us, that doesn't matter. We only want the deal desk proposal stage and that's the action. So that's the, what we use this little Boolean condition for check. Is this deal a proposal? get more information about that deal. You can see from this little Salesforce node, this one's doing a little formatting. It's like, think of it, there's a lot of different data helpers you might need in, in creating automations or integrations. This happens to be a text helper doing some sort of format for the, the currency. Um, you have, if I look at the left-hand side, there's obviously a crazy amount of helpers, date, time, encryption, file, anything you probably could think of to manipulate data you could find in our toolbox. Um, this is just a brief example. And then the next step is the post to deal desk in Slack. So approvals can be done a few different ways. In this automation, it's leveraging Slack. Pretty intuitive and easy um, interface to use if everyone in your team uses it. So then you can see our second flow, it posts to Slack. Essentially, it's a custom message that has the requirements and then uh, is, allows the user to jump in and then either click a button and see that, okay, do I approve this or not? And then when that button's clicked inside of Slack, Trey gets notified, right? So you see this on action trigger. It's a second part of the workflow. We're now in workflow two and it carries out the deal desk, right? It does some stuff where it listens for the action, gets the user, right? Cause think about deal desk, maybe you have three people on the panel, you need to get all three of them and then essentially check them out and see if they approved it or did not approve it. And based on those actions do the further actions, the key one being uh, getting the message that was received and then updating the appropriate stage in Salesforce, right? So think about it in Salesforce, what you actually do is from a governance standpoint, you will make it so no one can actually move um, this stage forward. So say pretend deal desk is from six to seven, you can allow your reps to move the deal from one, two, three, four, five, but then the only person who has the governance or um, ability to move uh, a stage, a deal through deal desk is actually the, your tray user, your tray admin, whatever admin you save in your account. And so that way a rep or um, any sort of individual in Salesforce could never pass the deal desk uh, cycle themselves, right? The only person that in your Salesforce instance is allowed to is your tray user. So it's kind of a restriction that adds added security um, in case someone is trying to streamline something that they're not maybe permitted to do. Cool. So I ran through that pretty quickly. I think we got a good grasp on what the what we're trying to do. 
obviously you can change any of these ups, right? Say if you want to do approval through Microsoft Teams instead, easy to do. Um, if you want to do some sort of approval through email, you could do that as well. Um, and the automations can be customized, right? This is just one problem. This was like uh, an individual's, uh, one of our customers like, hey, our deal desk pro um, protocol is weak. So we have this automation ability, this solution that we build out all kinds of workflows. Let's just build a deal desk one and help streamline that. Um, some of our customers have hundreds and hundreds of workflows streamlining in, uh, intercom chat. I mentioned Lee routing earlier, HR onboarding. The use cases are all custom to what your current problems are. So with that said, hey, I see you. Hey Ben, we have a, we have a great question here and I, um, I want to um, let everyone know to to ask questions in the in the Q and A. We're tr we're going to try to get as many um, as possible. But and I see a bunch coming in now. So Allison asks, does your integration with Salesforce allow for custom objects? Oh, did you already answer this? Oh, sorry, I, I typed an answer to hers. Oh, okay, um, perfect. Do you just want to uh, quickly go over custom uh, custom objects? Yeah. Real quick. Um, yeah, Allison, so great question, right? I'm going to actually show you in our, our Salesforce flow. Uh, I also responded to your answer real fast in there. Um, but so you can see, I just popped into any, any Salesforce connector. So I'm going to choose our account one. You can see I'm on the account object. Pretty cool that so this little drop down menu, right? I'm looking at record type. This is a find records operation, but it's essentially is going to find based on what you're looking for. And so I'm choosing our account list, but you can see, see how there's a little bit of a delay when I click on that. It's actually hitting the API in those two seconds to get all the current objects that exist. If I were to go in, pop into our Salesforce instance and create a new one right now, and then refresh that list, it would show up. Same thing for, so any sort of object, the fields as well. So if any sort of custom field um, that exists on, your instance of Salesforce or any system for that matter that leaves it open, you can see. So you can see all of these, all these fields. Like I said, if I created a new field on that account object right now, and then I refresh this list, it would show up in this list. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Um, M asks, can Trey, uh, can the Trey platform interact with our company's database? Wondering if we'd be able to update records in our database with trade.io yes the answer to your question I'm trying to pop into our q a but it's froze hold on let me stop sharing i'm just going to restart the share so i can see if i can just click in the questions do, do, do. all right it won't let me click into qa right now um yes yeah, so the question was um about connecting to a, to a custom database right yeah to their company's database and i guess we'd want to know which uh what they're using as a database right ben yeah no, exactly, exactly like Sanders indicating, right? So there's a database is, is kind of a vague term, right? So if it's some sort of SQL database, MS, SQL, MySQL, Postgres, SQL, very common. Uh, if it's, it depends, there's instances where you have maybe an on-premise or some sort of private cloud that you use. You, we can, this, is, this would be for more of a generic database that's already in some sort of public cloud instance. If it's private, we can build a custom connection and do what's called an on-premise agent. But long story short, any sort of database that you have residing anywhere, you could connect to Trey. And you, if you built a custom connection, you would save it the same way as like you're seeing an MS node. We would build you a, a custom node for your database and you just reuse that node or connector whenever you want in a workflow or process at any point to push your full data. Great. Thank you. And let's continue with these questions. Thanks again for asking um, everyone. So Leah asks, how do I bring in all of the workflows that I want? Uh, so I guess I have a question to your question. You mean all of your workflows into Trey or, or I guess what I'm, I, I'm a little confused on the question. Yeah, Leah, if you could um, clarify, what, what do you mean? Well, using the trade platform, you build all of the workflows and they are, you know, they basically appear here, like what Ben is showing. Um, 
and you can tag them and you can organize them in different ways. Uh, but let us know what, if you could clarify um, this question about um, organizing your, your workflows. Um, let's see, Emma asks, is the approval slash permissioning specific to this use case? Or is that something um, that is part of uh, our process internally for other use cases? So with regards to the deal desk approval slash rejection, um, you know, this is something that we do internally. Um, we have other processes where we approve or reject a request. Uh, for instance, our IT uh, team uses a similar process. Uh, but you can do this however you want and how your business is set up. Um, it, it, you know, it, it depends how the approval process works at your company. Um, but let us know, um, I don't know, if, if you have anything else to add um, to that. Um, and Ben, I don't know if you wanted to add anything else as well. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. So exactly like Sanders explaining, yeah, approvals are, it's a, it's a common sort of piece of your automation, right? You want to streamline and automate um, events to a certain point and then have a quick approval to make sure it's working or someone gets, uh, agrees to it, right? So yeah, you can apply that wherever. Uh, maybe it, we use it for like new leads coming in, right? Um, to qualify leads, sometimes new lead comes into intercom or drift, some sort of chatting feature um, to say, hey, do you want this lead to get routed to a rep? Um, you can automate ticket responses via approval too, where uh, maybe some person is responding to another ticket and you want someone else to approve it. You can insert the approval ability in any sort of automation that you build out. We do these every single week. So every week we go over different use cases. You can use the same Zoom link uh, to join the next weekly demo. So thanks again for joining and we hope to see you next week. Goodbye team.